Hey there, how's it going everyone? This is MindBlank. Welcome back to my channel where today we're taking a look at the X11 API overhead on the AMD drivers specifically for the Polaris architecture. I received requests to cover the newly released Crimson 16.9.1 driver. So I went ahead and searched to see what the fuss was about with this driver and I found multiple sources claiming that they have received improved DX11 performance partly due to the fact that the API overhead was reduced with 16.9.1. I also wanted to check out how AMD was doing lately with Crimson drivers and DX11 API overhead so... I got my rusty trusty RX 480 overclocked to 1465 MHz core clock and 8700 gigabits per second VRAM. I paired it first with Crimson 16.8.3 and then 16.9.1 and then grabbed the Gigabyte GTX 1060 also overclocked to a comfy 2100 MHz and 9400 gigabits per second VRAM and added finally the Gigabyte GTX 1070 G1 which I left at factory clocks so around 1960 to 1970 megahertz core clock. For games I chose a still very CPU demanding single player popular titles out there since these are the places you will feel the API overhead taking its toll like Rise of the Tomb Raider, Geothermal Valley which is extremely CPU dependent in DX11, not in DX12 though, The Witcher 3 with Novigrad City, another game that loves CPU horsepower in general tested with no hair works and SSAO in order to also keep things equal between all cards. GTA 5, another blockbuster that needs CPU oomph to bring its extremely lively world to existence, tested with ultra settings but no extended scaling distances or specific vendor shadows. Crisis 3 was my fourth pick as this game's welcome to the jungle level is still, after all these years, very hard on CPUs and can also scale with more than 4 cores. Last but not least is Fallout 4 which for reasons unbeknownst to us gamers it is very taxing on the CPU especially in urban areas like Diamond City which is where I chose to test. This video is actually very late according to my schedule and that is solely due to the fact that the testing alone took me days. But I did not want to just show you some average numbers, so I went ahead and also tested frame times, because frame times always give you a more clearer picture behind those simple average numbers. For the CPU I use my Core i7-4790K which I adapted to different needs. Unless specified, all test beds run 2400MHz RAM which matters and you will see why. My first run is with the i7 at 4600MHz, pretty straightforward. Second run, I downclocked the CPU to 3700MHz mimicking a Core i7-4770 non-K. Third step was to keep the 3.7GHz but disable hyperthreading making this very similar except the increased cache or cache, however you want to pronounce it, to a Core i5-4570. The fourth step was to disable two cores but enable hyperthreading making this a Core i3-4170. And for my last iteration I used the same Core i3 but I paired it with 1600MHz CL9 RAM just to see if that makes any difference. And spoiler alert, it does. I also tested with Crimson 16.9.1 as multiple sources have stated that this driver improves the API overhead, more of a silent feature slash fix since it isn't stated in the driver log. And off we go with Rise of the Tomb Raider settings as per above. This area is extremely CPU demanding and this is why I think that the GTX 1070 is kinda held back here and could do a better job, an even better job with a CPU like a Sky Lake or upcoming Cabby Lake. We see a minor improvement for Crimson 16.9.1 across the board here. The RX 480 definitely loses more performance than the GTX 1060 when you pair it with less than a Core i5. Just to get a clearer picture, here's the percentage scaling for each graphics card. I'll have this for every benchmark for easy to understand results. Results, the GTX 1060 retains higher percentage GPU utilization in any combination. The GTX 1070 is just a bad pair for a Core i3 and slow RAM. Also, look at the difference in average FPS between slow and fast RAM. 5 FPS average at this level is nothing to sneeze at. But averages only tell a part of the story, that is why we are now taking a look at frame time comparisons. The RX 480 shows frame time spikes well above 80 milliseconds with both 
both driver sets. The GTX 1060 and 1070 also show some, but less than the RX 480, but switch to a Core i5 and all graphics cards showing consistent frame times, with the RX 480's spikes being more prominent, showing that it is clearly waiting for a CPU. This is API overhead right here in clear. Moving on to Witcher 3 Novigrad, we again see the new Crimson driver showing better performance across the board, even if just for a few frames. But paired with the i3 and slow RAM, we see a significant jump here, more than 5 FPS average, just for using the new driver set. So excellent job here, I have to say. The 1070 is again happy to have all the processing power in the world and continues to scale, although on a diminishing returns logic after a certain threshold. Looking at the percentage based numbers, we see the Radeon doing a much better job here compared to Tomb Raider, but scaling is under the GTX 1060. The 1070, as can be seen, is definitely a card that needs to be powered with a fast modern i5, preferably overclocked or directly a fast i7. Frame times on an OCD i7 look good for all cards with minor hiccups for the RX 480 with both driver sets. All cards show spikes, but these are few and far between to not impact the experience. Moving to an i5, the situation is largely unchanged, but with more frame time variance in general for all cards. Nothing significant or noteworthy in my opinion, a fast i5 is ok for The Witcher 3. GTA 5 loves its CPUs and we see a GTX 1070 scaling nicely here. I'm sure it would continue to scale if I had a Skylake at 4.6 GHz instead of a Haswell to test that. We see some inconsistent results for the Crimson drivers, but again a significant bump in performance can be seen with the i3 and slow RAM combo, showing that there is something great going on with this driver indeed. Percentage based results show very good scaling for the AMD card, the best up until now, managing to beat the 1016% GPU performance retention when paired with the i3. Very good job once again, showing that the AMD team took its reduced API overhead endeavor serious with the Crimson drivers. Frame time analysis on the 4.6 GHz i7 shows the same spikes present for the RX 480, which are not here on the Nvidia cards at all. Both drivers show spikes, although nothing alarming since they do stop at about 25 milliseconds always and should not really be noticeable during gameplay. On the 3.7 GHz i5, we see frame time variance for all cards with the same spike for the RX 480. It still looks good, and I wouldn't mind pairing these cards, any of these cards, with a fast i5 for GTA 5. Crisis 3, welcome to the jungle, or should I say to the CPU jungle? Oh god, that was a bad joke, sorry. Okay, moving on. Again, the GTX 1070 is scaling and scaling as CPU performance rises. The RX 480 takes a huge hit when paired with the i3 with fast RAM, but we once more see the same performance boost for the i3 slash slow RAM and Crimson 16.9.1 combo. Actually, performance improvements are pretty much across the board here with the new driver. Looking at percentage based results, the RX 480 scales worse than the 1060, especially when running a 2 core 4 thread CPU like an i3. With the i5 and upwards, things look very good for the AMD team. The 1070 is crippled by slow CPUs in this game, so we cannot take an i3 slash slow RAM and 1070 combo into consideration. Frame time analysis for a 4600MHz i7 is very good with minor AMD spikes. There are some spikes at the end of the benchmark when facing an even more demanding grassy area. But switching to an i5 shows how unreliable averages really are, as all cards show severe frame time variance here and the clean results visible on the i7 are gone and replaced with less buttery smooth gameplay. And yeah, this is pretty much why in 2016 I still test Crisis for both CPU and GPU benchmarks. Last, Fallout 4 with very inconsistent results between Crimson driver sets. This is the first test where the 16.9.1 driver shows less performance on the i3 slash slow RAM combo. The GTX 1070 as per usual scales according to CPU power. Curiously enough, this old game engine takes advantage of more than 4 threads, showing increased performance on Nvidia hardware at least, where the results are more stable. 
This game also benefits like all others however from fast RAM and we see a very nice performance boost from 2400MHz and the i3 combo here. Percentage results show the RX480 actually scaling pretty good in this game comparable to the 1060, sometimes better, sometimes retaining less performance with slower CPUs. Looking at frame times, however on the i7 things look good for all cards with just a few minor dips for the RX480 and only with the Crimson 16.8.3 and not with 16.9.1. Switching to an i5 does not alter the situation by much, although frame times are not that grouped as they were on the i7. All in all, a good showing. And there you have it folks, I hope you have a clear picture now of how things stack up in both camps in 2016. If I get the chance to test an older GCN card and the results are noteworthy, I'll sure have another video posted about this. So the conclusions are that in 2016 AMD certainly makes strides in order to reduce the API overhead in the X11 titles and I just hope that they fix this and they catch up to Nvidia before the X12 becomes the norm and all of this doesn't even matter anymore. Anyway, thank you for watching, if you liked the video give it a thumbs up, remember to share to help others and thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing. See you next time everybody, bye bye.